staring down messy CSVs, broken up text, and dates and categories that don't make any sense? Well, watch me fix all of it in five seconds using Python with Power BI. And the best part? You don't need to know how to write a single line of code because ChatGPT is going to do all the work for you. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to use Python in Power BI to clean data on the back end and also to build custom visuals with advanced data analysis. If that sounds good, let's get rolling. So here we are in Power BI and we're going to hop into Power Query. Now I do want to mention that in this video I'm not going to be covering Power BI or Power Query. I've got great videos on those. You can click the link up here to check out the one on Power Query because that's really what we're focusing on. If you haven't worked much in Power Query, go watch that video, make sure you've got the basics down and then come back because we're going to be going into advanced functionality and wanting to help you get the most out of it. So again, make sure to check that video out if you're pretty new to Power Query. So Power Query's basic data transformation is M. And that's what we work with when we go to the advanced editor. Power Query also automatically writes M anytime we add a step from the transform tab or add a column. It's always writing M code in the background. M has limitations. It's not as dynamic as full-on coding languages like Python. But the great news is that Python integrates right with Power Query to do advanced data transformations beyond what we've traditionally seen. The other great news is just like we're able to write M with AI, we're able to write the Python we need with AI. So how does this work? Well, there's two ways that you can use Python in Power Query. We're really going to focus on the second one, but I want to make sure you're familiar with both. The first one is you can run a Python script to get data. So if I go to add a data source and I come down to other, you're going to see you have the option for R script and Python script. If I click on that, it's going to give me the option to run Python. Now, again, this isn't the way I would normally do this because most of the time, if you're working with an ERP, if you're working with Excel files, you're just going to want to go get them directly. But no, it is an option that you can go grab data if you want to write the code to do so. Now, the second way to use Python and Power Query is how we're going to use it. So if I go to the transform tab and I come over to the right, you'll see the ability to run R scripts or Python scripts. These are actually going to add a step into the file. So whereas the first way is adding a new data source via Python, this is going to add your Python transformation right into the current steps. So from here, it's going to go in right after all these other steps we have, and it will do the Python analysis that way. Have any questions so far? Go ahead and leave them down in the comment. I read and respond to every single one, and I'm more than happy to help. So when I click on run Python script, a window is going to come up. So the Python field here is going to give me the ability to do transformation. Now note that all of the existing data is going to feed into Python as data set. That's what this line is saying here. You don't need to do anything with this. A hashtag in Python means a comment. This is just saying that all of the data coming from this Power Query, all these steps, is in data set, which is the data frame that Python needs to work with. So we're going to come over to our chat GPT that's helping us write all of our code, and I'm going to paste in a prompt. So we're in ChatGPT. I've got a prompt posted. This will look a little bit different than the M because Python is a lot more dynamic. So let's say, help me write a Python script for Power Query. I am running the script inside the dataset table one, which Power Query inserts as a data frame called dataset, which is again that first line we saw in Power Query. For column product detail, I want to separate sizes from the product and create two new columns. The products are at the end of the product and are either small, regular, or large. Note that not all products have a size. So just to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So if we look at our product detail here, you're going to see the same product, but there could be multiple sizes, right? Earl Grey large, Earl Grey small, and those are separate products, but we want to be able to look at the product separate from the size because we make different decisions on our products based on sizes versus the product. We want the ability to separate that out, but the POS can't handle that. And this is nothing that M code would be able to work with. So we're going to do this in Python. We're going to send this to ChatGPT and see what we get back. If you haven't already, make sure to click the link down in the description and join my free weekly newsletter, Finance Automation Insider. I post a brand new video every single week, and I don't want you to miss a thing. Plus, when you join, I'll send you a free copy of my guide to 15 5-Minute Finance Automations that you can use today. So again, click the link down in the description to get started. We've asked a pretty advanced question. Python, you'll typically see ChatGPT go to thinking, but again, unlike in prior models of ChatGPT, it's going to automatically select whether it needs thinking or whether it can give a fast answer based on the question you've asked it. All right, ChatGPT is coming back. We've gotten a great compliment saying this is exactly what Python and Power Query is good at. So that's great to see. Here's all of our code. We're going to go ahead and copy the code over. 
We'll paste this and run Python script. All right, we'll hit OK and see what we get back. All right, you'll see the Python script is now running. This could take a while. You're going to see all the kind of status updates down here in the bottom right corner, and that'll let you know kind of where Python is in its processing. Okay, so the Python script has come back. Now you're going to get back this kind of data set data frame right here. To see the full results, you just have to click on table and it will expand it to a full table. Again, as Python runs, you can watch the script and see what's happening down here, just so you know kind of where it is in the process. It has to go and query the data, run the script to do the full expansion of the data, and that'll help you keep track of where you are in the process. All right, so our analysis has come back from Python. Let's scroll over to the right and see what we got. So we got two new columns. Here's the product base and the product size. So just as some examples, here we've got Ethiopia regular. It has correctly separated it. Let's find one that didn't have a size. Here's oatmeal scone, and it was correctly able to pull oatmeal scone. So now we could do an analysis on our products themselves, kind of not caring about the size. And we can look at, you know, kind of what sizes are being ordered. This has given us a whole new wealth of data that was sitting in our point of sale data, but wasn't accessible without Python. How cool is that? So now we're going to try something really crazy in Python and do a full on analysis using Power Query in Python. So let's go ahead and give it kind of our base prompt. Help me write a Python script for Power Query. I'm running the script inside the data set table one, which Power Query inserts as a data frame called data set. Analyze the data set for outlier transactions and return any transaction lines that did not follow patterns. All right, so this is a very broad prompt. I'm just saying I want to give transactions that could potentially be outliers. I'm going to let ChatGPT just kind of see what it thinks about that. I'm not going to give it specific guidance yet. We may need to do that later, but we'll see what we get back. So we're getting it back again. Some great jokes from. So we're getting it all back again. Some great commentary here from ChatGPT that show me the weird stuff is basically data therapy. So here is the Python script we can use. Looks great to me. We'll copy the code over. We're going to add run Python script and we are going to just see what happened. All right, so now we are running our Python script, our second Python script and watching our status down here to see where we're at in the process. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I post brand new videos every single week and I don't want you to miss a thing. Now, if all goes well, this should condense the data set down to just the outliers. If any, we're going to see it shrink down again to that kind of data set with the table and then we'll be able to expand it out again. There it is. So here are our outliers. This is our outlier data set and here's our stats. So it's again done full analysis and now it's generating entirely new tables for us. So let's go ahead and see what this outlier says. I think also this is really cool. I think we're going to get stats here on kind of how many outliers there were out of the whole transaction set. We can check that out in a little bit. So here is our data set of all the outliers. You'll see this isn't these numbers are not continuous, meaning it has identified just specific transactions for us that it wants us to look at. So that's really cool. This is a cleaned up data set with the outliers for us to look at. Now let's go back to the run Python script. I want to understand what's in stats because I think this could be pretty cool. Wow, and here's our stats. This is really cool. It's giving us the mean and the standard deviation for our store locations and our product categories. So ChatGPT just kind of decided how it was going to handle the concept of an outlier. It's looking at it by store location and by product category to see where transactions fall out of line there. And these are the stats on what has been identified as an outlier and what's been identified as within line with the mean and the standard deviation. How cool is that? So we've seen that Python can do some really amazing things to our data in Power Query before it ever gets into the dashboard. But there's also a way that Python can help us once we're actually in our visuals to build better graphics, better analysis based on our data. So if you come over here to the visualizations, you're going to see just like we had in Power Query, a visual for R and a visual for Python. We'll go ahead and add in the Python visual. Now this is really critical. The Python visual will only work once you've pulled values in. It can work with any values you add, but it can only work with values that you've added to the value field. You'll see up on the canvas, you'll see kind of the usual layout on the canvas, and there's a kind of a temporary Power BI chart here, just an image to show where it's going to be. And then the new part down here is the script editor. So once we drag in our first value, and we're going to work with our point of sale data again, we're going to add transaction quantity, then this comes up. Hashtag in Python again, that means it's a comment, so Power BI is just giving you a few notes here. 
always going to remove duplicated rows from the data set you've given us, and it's going to create a data frame for you automatically called data set, just like we saw in Power Query. Now, something that tripped me up for a while that you don't need to worry about is you'll only see one of your values here. Don't worry, Power BI is going to pull every single thing you add to values in. It's just only going to show the first thing you added, which in this case is transaction quantity. So don't worry about that. I spent a lot of time worrying about that. Then we're going to put our code down here. And again, you don't need to write your own Python. We're going to turn right to AI to help us with this. So I've got my basic prompt here, help me write a Python script for Power BI visuals. Power BI provides the data to Python in a data frame called dataset. Now we're going to go in and describe what we want to happen. So I want to say, I need you to create a script for a heat map. I want to use our store location and So I need you to create a script for a heat map. I want to use our store location and transaction quantity to create the heat map. We'll go ahead and send that away and see what we get back. Okay, again, ChatGPT is just so kind to us. Very nice, it's classic. So we have our store and our hour heat map. It's given us the Python script we can drop straight in. We'll go ahead and copy this, make sure our hour store location and transaction quantity are in the values and fields. Let's go ahead and do that because I just pulled in transaction quantity. Here's our. Here's store location, that's everything we need. We'll go ahead and paste our script down here. Once your script is in, you can just hit this run button and then we'll see our visual populate up here. And there it is, our hourly sales by store heat map. So you'll see Astoria is pretty much just low and even across the way. Our Manhattan store has a lot of variability, really peaking between 8 and 10 a.m., which makes total sense for kind of a location around offices versus a more, you know, neighborhood coffee shop that's going to have people trickling in and out throughout the day. So you can really see those differences between the locations pop. And think about this from like a management standpoint about the ability to optimize your labor hours. You can clearly see you can't just schedule all the locations the same. So again, with a chat GPT prompt and copying and pasting code, we were able to create this fantastic visual that would be very challenging to create in Power BI on its own because it's also doing kind of that analysis and that data cleaning for us right in line with creating the visual. How incredibly cool is this? If you enjoyed this video, then definitely make sure to check out my video on how to build Power BI dashboards with the help of AI. I'm going to put the link to that video right here. This is going to show you even more ways to automate your Power BI development using AI tools. I'll catch you over there. Until then, this is Mike signing off from F9 Finance. Cheers. Mm -hmm.